Okay, I hope many of you really caught what I was talking about in the previous lesson about finding the directional derivative of phi at point zero as it travels along you. Again, I re-emphasize we have three-dimensional space. So a point in three-dimensional space is a certain value given by phi. Now this value, I remind you again, is a scalar value. Okay, so we have three-dimensional space x, y, and z. We have three-dimensional space over here. And we got a certain point over here, and we take the coordinates of the point, put it inside here, and we get a scalar value, okay? Whatever the value may be, what is its representation, we don't know. But as an example, let's just say we take a point 2, minus 1, 0. So, we just want to find the directional derivative of phi at point P0. P0 is 2, minus 1, 0 as it travel along the direction U. Okay. We also find out, or we shall write it down now, which is the direction derivative, okay? We found out that that is equal to a whole equation over there. But we can represent the equation as del phi evaluated at p naught, and we dot this with the vector u, okay? Bear in mind that u needs to be a unit vector. So, for me to find the direction derivative, I can just immediately take the scalar field or the scalar function defined by phi and then apply the del operator and then dot that with the unit vector. For, uh, for an example, let's just take the unit vector as, or let's just take the vector, so to speak, 2 minus 4, k, 2 minus 4, 1. Okay, now this is not the unit vector yet. It is just a vector that we are traveling in that direction. The same direction that we want to find the rate of change of the value of phi. Okay, I say again. We start at this point, this point is P0, okay? And we pick just a vector, any vector. For this case, we pick vector 2 minus 4, 1. So vector 2 minus 4, 1 travels in that direction. So what we want to find is that the rate of change of P0 as it travels in that direction. Or more specifically, the rate of change of phi. My apologies, the rate of change of phi as we move in that direction over there because when we take the new values of P0, Oh, sorry, as we take the values of P0 and put it inside here, we get the rate of change of phi. Okay? P0 is simply a way of just classifying the point, okay? which is broken down into x, y, and z. Okay? So, let's apply the del operator to phi. Okay? And let's, okay, we'll apply the del operator at phi first. Okay? And that would give us, the del operator says that we partial differentiate phi with respect to the first variable, which is x to give us the first component, which is i. So differentiating this with respect to x, partial differentiating, meaning to say the other variables, we take it as constant. Okay, so if that's a constant, that's a constant, we get 2x minus 1. Sorry. 2x, 2y, x minus 1. Sorry, minus e to the power of z. Okay? Then it forms the i component. Now, I must say again that partial differentiation gets a bit tricky, so I also need to be extra careful a bit. Okay, now partial, partial differentiating this with respect to y, treating that as constant, so we just simply get x squared j, partial differentiating with respect to z, which is this one over here, and we get minus x e to the power of z, and that forms the k component. Okay, all is nice and, and well. Okay, so now we want to evaluate this at the point P0. So we evaluate del phi at P0. Okay, P0 is 2 minus 1, 0. And that will simply give us minus 5 i plus 4 j. And let me just check minus 2 k. Okay, now this is a vector, okay? Now, that relationship of the vector to the point, because, you know, it's a vector, after all, in three-dimensional space, I will explain what that vector means later. But for now, we don't have enough information to say what the vector means. But what we can do, we can dot this by the unit vector u. Now, the vector that we specify in which the dot, or in which the point P0 is traveling, is that, okay, bear in mind that when we use this equation over here, u needs to be a unit vector. So u is going to be equals to 1 over the magnitude of v multiplied by v, okay? And the magnitude of v, we can calculate as root 21. 
and the vector would be 2 i take away 4 j plus k okay now we got the vector here we got the vector over there so we can now dot the two vectors together so del phi evaluated at p naught dot with the unit vector u is gonna equal to let me just make a quick calculation or let me refer to my book which is minus 28 over root 21. This is a scalar va value, okay, because the rate of change of phi evaluated at p naught in the direction of u is also going to be a scalar value. So that makes sense. So we dot these two vectors together, we get a scalar value because this scalar value gives us the, direction, the, the directional derivative, okay? And that is just a short example on how all these things fit together. May I remind you again that del phi okay, gives us a vector. Del phi putting the value inside there gives us a vector. The interpretation of vector in the three-dimensional space will save that for the next lesson, but it, it just gives us a vector. This needs to be the unit vector, unit vector here, okay? So if you have a vector in which the point P0 is traveling to, in this case it's the vector over here, what you do is just you just divide this vector by one over its own magnitude to give us the unit vector okay and when we dot the two together we get a scalar value because the rate of change is a scalar value it is not a vector okay i am traveling with velocity v that that, that has a direction left right straight or back okay but then my rate of change on my velocity okay is not a vector okay it's a scalar just like how the rate of change of phi is a scalar provided we started off with a scalar a scalar field okay Apologies, the rate of change, okay, let's get this straight. The rate of change of velocity is acceleration. Acceleration also has a direction, okay? But the rate of change of phi starts out to be a scalar value, and that rate of change would be a scalar value as well, okay? There we go, an example of the vector, the gradient function, and the directional derivative.